federal government expresses urgency to improve policy in solid mineral sector. Information and communication technology remains one of one among the fastest growing sectors of Nigeria's economy. Seven plants produce Nigeria's 59% electricity, says the World Bank, all steady in their weak high as prospects of Iran supply glut wanes, plus need to regulate online lending companies in focus. This is Business Express on the network service of the NTA, and we are reaching you live from Abuja, the nation's capital. I am Leah Katun, Baba Tunde. The federal government has sought the need and expresses the urgency to improve procedures, documentation and regulations in the Nigerian solid mineral sector. This is a deliberate policy measure aimed at developing mining potentials and minimizing dependency on oil. At stakeholders' consultative forum on the review of the draft mineral exports guidelines in Abuja, Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning Zainab Ahmed said that the policy has become more urgent in view of the present economic uh, global economic challenges occasioned by the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as volatility of global oil prices, which is the country's main foreign exchange earner. She added that the implementation of the guidelines will bring sanity to solid minerals extractive industry and further inform direct investors' decision. The proposed document is expected to reduce the usual time for export cycle from an uncertain current time frame to 26 working days and processing of exit point documentation and shipments to five and three days. The information and communications technology ICT sector has retained its position as a sector with the highest growth rate of all the main sectors of the Nigerian economy in the first quarter of 2021. The Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Dr. Issa Pentami, in a statement signed by his technical assistant, um, IT, Dr. Femi Adilui, attributed the consistent positive performance of the ICT sector to the focused and committed support from the present administration. He noted that this is based on the first quarter 2021 report on Nigeria's gross domestic product GDP released by the National Bureau of Statistics, which grew by 0.51%. And Nigeria's foreign exchange reserves have depreciated by $790 million despite rise in crude oil prices. Data from the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, showed that the foreign reserves stood at $34.43 billion as at May 17. The dollar coasted at the bottom of its recent range on Tuesday as softer than expected U.S. data and fresh insistence from Federal Reserve officials that policy will steady on hold allayed investor fears about inflation, forcing interest rates higher.
Now we move to the business of the day. I'm sure you might have received messages. Some of these messages actually come in awkward formats. And just like you see right behind me here is one of such messages. And of course, they get you off balance. And it could be very, very embarrassing when you get something telling you a friend or relative, whoever with mobile phone number, whatever, took a loan from this uh company which is seriously overdue the company has already taken steps or take steps to block his bvn by submitting all details to the channel in charge please send him the link in the message to contact us and make payments this is one of those messages people get to receive all the time and of course this also comes with a cause and of course you get uh, added into a lease on transactions that you might have nothing to do with this is just another one as well this matches messages they just keep coming so this morning we're trying to look at how to regulate online lending companies like this and it is the focus of our discussion as we make efforts to put the trend into perspective now Uche Olo is the immediate past president of the Chartered Institute of Bankers CIB and he joins the program from Lagos you're welcome to the program thank you Julia, for having me. Great. Um, could you just uh, shift backwards so I can see your face uh, properly? Just an inch back. Thank you. Now, these uh, fintech startups, one may say, what gaps are they feeling in the money market space? Maybe we start from there. Thank you very much, Leah. Um, what you must understand about the Nigerian market is that the retail and the consumer loan space is very huge because Nigeria has a very large population that the conventional banks uh, may not be able to you know, fill all that because of uh, these are more structured and will take time in terms of documentation. Uh, so you have um, the loan uh, sharks, as you may call it, or the fintech, the finance and investment um, people coming together to okay. fill up this space. So clearly they are trying to fill the uh, investor space, that's it. They will take consumer space. Okay, now Am I if, uh, if, we're, if we're looking at uh, this uh, retail consumer space, to a large, uh, what, what, what to a large extent are we talking about? Yeah, you see, the point clearly is the extent to which, yeah, you know, the retail consumer, I don't have the appropriate statistics to give you that, but um, you are looking in re a region of some billions of naira. Okay, so now they, they, they come up and then they tell you, and then you just get a message that says you've qualified for a loan facility. You, we, can, we can give you at short notice 50,000 naira, 30,000 naira, and you pay at your convenience. And then the person just accepts the offer or you decline the offer. So I'm tempted to ask uh, who regulates them? Uh, let me uh, uh, clearly make a distinction here. FinTech is a leveraging of financial technologies to provide services. And so you have the finance houses, investment houses, leveraging on this technology to deliver these solutions to their various uh, customers and prospects. So clearly, who licensed them, if I can answer your questions, the other finance uh, uh, office, specifically the other financial institutions department of central bank, licensed the finance and these other institutions, like the, um, you have uh, uh, the uh, mortgage banks, you have the uh, uh, smaller institutions that you know deals with uh, lending, they are licensed by the other finance uh, uh, investment department of uh, central bank uh, called office, the office department. Okay, so um, this uh, th these issues, you get messages that uh, you 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 end up having 
to, to, to stand in for somebody. I'm asking this question because um, are there acceptable ways of addressing defaulters outside these uh, very embarrassing messages and calls to people that uh, they don't even know and they claim that you've guaranteed somebody and you don't have an idea what you're talking about? I think it is very, it's unacceptable for you to uh, invade on someone's privacy when he was not privy to that contract. And so um, I believe that it's because the people are not professional. Uh, you know, in, any, in, in the market, you could have people who just want to enter the market. Uh, yes, there are a lot of uh, room for, um, for a lot of play there, and you think you could just... There are certain processes. When you want to enter into a loan agreement, you must sign documents. And if you have a guarantor, the guarantor, a guarantee must be evidence in writing. And that guarantee says that, okay, in the unlikely event, or in the event that the defaulter does not pay, I step in to cure you of, your, of the obligations. So when you are not part of that, how would you, uh, you know, but like in Nigeria, anything happens. What they have done is to mine data from various areas because we are in, the, in you know, uh, data is the next oil of today. And so they mine data from whatever angle and then use it um, to begin to embarrass. I think it's unacceptable. Um, the office should take note of this because um, if customers have complaints, they should act the proper channel to direct it is actually the office. Because if you are not part of it, I don't think they have a hold on you. They don't have a hold on you. It's embarrassing, no doubt. Uh, but I may advise them, for those who are involved in the retail uh, consumer loan, you should be able to register with the bureau, uh, credit bureaus, where you can you know, ascertain the credit uh, worthiness of your of your of your borrowers, so that if you don't have a situation where you now be running, uh, you know, second guessing or guessing, looking out for where to, you know, embarrass people by asking them for for data. But let me advise you that, provided you are not privy to that, you didn't sign any uh, document. They don't have any hold on you. So, uh, what is the legality behind mining data from uh, from so-called uh, loan obtainers when you mine their data without them knowing? What is the legality? Well, I, 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 the point is that, um, like you have in other jurisdictions, you can you are you are you can mine data for your marketing. There are people, there are uh, institutions. That have that are licensed to sell this data or to mine this data. So maybe they get it from there. It's 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 legal, depending on on which where you source them. Um, you have as you interact with people, uh, you have this data exposed to 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 this uh, system. So you can as well you know source them from there. So. In answer to your question, are they legal? Yes, they are legal. I know if you if you get it illegally. Okay, so um, how can we ensure that this space is prop is properly regulated for healthy transactions that that are devoid of these sort of harassments? I think that the regulators should step up their game by you know. Uh, coming up with uh, appropriate means of regulating this space because it's very, very important space because they are delivering value. Why people go there because it's because of the way they have defined their value in terms of speed, in terms of convenience. And so it is very important that this they are playing a very huge role, maybe because of some rotten apple who don't say that uh, we should uh, regulate in a way to kill them. No, I would propose that the regulators should step up their game in terms of uh, making sure that uh, those players in this uh, space 
follow due process. And then also to, I think that's where this Charter Institute of Bankers come in, because you need some element of professionalism inside uh, among these people, because you don't just go and bring people because, um, well, it is lucrative business, and then you don't want to follow due process. Banking or any form of lending has some professional ethical conduct to follow. So I'll call on the Institute of Bankers also to look into this space to provide the needed uh, skills, uh, capacitization of uh, the workers in that area. In addition to um, the central bank, the office, uh, doing their job in terms of uh, uh, stepping up their uh, oversight function. And then also clearly that uh, uh, these uh, people should submit themselves um, to uh, various institutions that regulate them. Okay. Now, sorry, before I let you go, you talked about submitting themselves to various uh, people that regulated. Would you perhaps uh, have an idea to share with us how to know which one of them is regulated or not? Like I said, you know, clearly, uh, the fintech, you know, let's make a clear distinction. Yeah. Finance, houses, uh, microfinance, uh, banks, mortgage loans, uh, investment houses are regulated by the other finance uh, office, financial institutions department. They are the ones who regulate this. What the finance or microfinance these institutions have done is that leveraging on technology because you have programmers writing programs and selling to these uh, service providers their programs to enable them provide solutions to this micro and retail loan uh, space. So the is a clear cut. Uh, you know when people talk fintech, fintech, fintech. Yes, fintech is just you know uh, people who leverage on technology to provide solutions. So now where do we vote from here? If answering your question. You have to be licensed. I think the central bank is also working out in making sure that this fintech are also come under this office. So by and large, we will begin to see a situation where we, uh, I think there is a program in, in CIBN where they are trying to bring all this under this umbrella to making sure that uh, we provide sanity in this marketplace and allow this big, uh, space to grow because they are providing the right kind of service because people pay their loans, um, school fees, and all that. They just, you know, with all the speed and convenience that you, you know, and provide for value. So it's very important that we, we harness the power, the potential of this space so as to jumpstart the economy. I must sincerely thank you, Mr. Uchi Olo, for joining us on the program this morning. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here once more. Yeah. And good morning, viewers. Thank you. On bottling the Nigerian Postal Service will not only upgrade Nigeria's postal institution to a global player, but will also expand its commercial viability. Ignatius Unkwa reports that this is coming from the public hearing on Nigerian Postal Service repeal and reenactment bill convened by the Senate Committee on Communications. To cover implementation of a national postal policy encouraging local and foreign investment in the postal industry. The establishment of a regulatory framework for the postal industry, which shall be an effective, impartial and independent authority. That is the Nigerian Postal Commission. Nigerian Postal Service to be exclusively in charge of stamp duties. Our observation, Mr. Chairman, is that this will be against the spirit of the Constitution. Now next in our Surviving COVID-19 series is an online service provider who despite setback caused by the pandemic is reinventing himself as COVID-19 vaccination continue to get the economy back on track. Musa Abubakar has details. <laughs> Surviving COVID-19 series is brought to you in partnership with the Central Bank of Nigeria.
We build websites for people. Um, we run digital campaigns. Basically, we give them presence online, allow them to engage with their I do. Business is gradually picking for Sule Jones after an unusual year with COVID-19 lockdown taking toll on businesses. His online service business was not spared as demand fell. But when it came with tanks, nobody wanted to do business, nobody wanted to invest. For the first three, four months, there was no business at all. There was that, but that lack of face-to-face -face marketing made clients want to engage with us digitally. He said his business took the heat of the pandemic, but he had to evolve by taking advantage of the huge traffic online at the time of the lockdown to keep income coming. Early came to the adults. We ran ads on Instagram, Facebook, and once those clients saw us that we could help them push their brands without a physical marketing team, some of them skeptical did engage with us. And after that, we delivered on their projects. Uh, actually, till now, we're still, they are still our clients. We thank God for that. We're able to show them the power of the internet and change their marketing mix. Because we found out that coaches were easier to sell. Uh, maybe like, um, the, maybe uh, motivational speakers, people who are teaching a particular trade, maybe soap making, cake baking. We had to build websites for them. He has applied for the COVID-19 survival fund and is hopeful the intervention will make a lot of difference. It will, it will take us, it will really help us because we, we noticed that when we started creating this digital marketing content, people didn't have this content. So we had to start using cameras. The, regular, the phones we saw, so it's filled at a certain website. But I, I believe maybe uh, red tape or something like that. We've not gotten any strong reply from them, but we've been growing organically as we've been growing. For him, the pandemic came with lessons for businesses. I think we are getting back. People have learned new habits. I think going forward, what I've noticed, if I see the proliferation of ads I see online now. I see a lot of Nigerians have started grabbing, understanding the use of the internet. Surviving COVID-19 series is brought to you in partnership with the Central Bank of Nigeria. Uh, the internet, they are doing its thing. Let's now see the commodities market for Tuesday morning. The stock market opens in Nigeria. Taiwan jumps more than 1%. Boss de Abel reports. Asian shares advanced on Tuesday as the region's main regional equity gauges climbed. In Hong Kong, the Hang Seng Index jumped 1.26%. In Japan, the Nikkei rose 0.67%, while the Hang Seng Index of Hong Kong also advanced 0.56%. Mainland Chinese shares were also positive as the Shanghai Composite added as much as 2.34% Tuesday. In early European trade, Pan region Euro stock 50 futures and German DAX futures inched up as the FTSE futures rose 0.48% at 7,051.59. U.S. stock futures were slightly higher in early morning trading on Tuesday following a strong session led by technology shares and reopening plays. Dow futures rose just 56 points. S&P 500 futures and Nasdaq 100 futures both traded in mildly positive territory. Stock markets in Africa have been reacting to global trends and have been showing positive sentiment. Markets are expected to sustain gains when the numbers begin to come in. With global market update, Boss Day Able, Business Express. 
And this is where we end this edition of the program. Remember to keep in touch with us. So do send in your comments, observations, and suggestions. Your questions also are welcome. Be informed that all previous episodes are available on YouTube on the NTA's channel. You can also communicate with us on Twitter. The handle is NTA News Now. Business Experts returns Wednesday at 3 p.m. My name is Leah Katung. Baba Tunde. Stay safe.